Today we're going to talk about motors. Did you know they have magnets in them? Magnets. How do they work? Today I'd like to talk about motors. We're just going to keep it simple hopefully. So if I go over your head, post your comments down below. Take me to task. I'm trying to do a nice introduction to motors today. So let's talk about the two different types of motors. And technically I got three on the table. So we have a brushed motor right here and we have a brushless motor right next to it. And in the brushless type, we actually have an in runner where the rotor is on the inside and an out runner where the rotor is on the outside. So let's start with the brushed motor. A brushed motor is going to have two wires. The ESC is going to plug right in and the ESC is going to control the speed of this two wire brushed permanent magnet motor. As you can see, the shaft is in the normal place that a motor would have it and you can turn the shaft and the case of the motor doesn't spin. On the inside, you can actually see the rotor or sometimes called the armature spinning. The armature, this here's our brushed armature or rotor. As you can see, this is a hand wound unit. The coils are wound around it. And then we have this shiny old commutator at the top. And the commutator is actually what makes it spin. It does the dirty work of commutating our coils for us. And these coils, once they get energized, they pull on the magnets. They attract to the magnets. So that is what gives us our rotation of the motor. Pretty simple device. You just put voltage to a brushed motor and it spins. Nice and basic. Brushed motors are typically lower power. You're going to have a voltage loss inside your brushes. That's going to create a little bit more heat. They just don't pull the amount of torque that a brushless motor can. On the upside though, they're relatively inexpensive. And something like this sport motor, you can get 500 miles out of it. It's you know, maybe even too good of a value for a $20 motor, but that's generally where brushed motors lie. Um, although you can get extremely expensive, high quality on the brushed motors. We do wind them in house, as you can see on this guy. This is a hand wound armature takes a lot of time and it also gives you a lot better torque and efficiency doing that. So just like any device, the more you pay for it, typically the better quality, the better energy density that you're going to get from that device. But mostly for the most part, a brushed motor is going to be the inexpensive, easy device that comes in pretty much any ready to run vehicle. So if you get a replacement motor, it's probably going to be a brushed motor. Let's talk about brushless next. We have our two topologies, the in-runner and the out-runner. As the name suggests, if I spin the shaft on this in-runner, everything runs on the inside. You don't really see anything happening. There's, there's nothing to tell you that there's fun going on inside the motor. On the out-runner, however, and you, have to, you have to hold it specially. As you can see, as I spin the shaft, the outside of the motor actually does spin. That's why they're called out-runners or outer rotor motors. The dead giveaway for a brushless motor is that it has three wires coming off of it. As you can see, both of these have three wires. And instead of just being able to put a straight voltage to two of the wires, like a brushed motor, we have to have a fancy ESC that puts voltage to all three wires in sequence to tell it to turn properly. And that's simply how they work. Since there's no brushes inside of a brushless motor, it has higher efficiency, torque density, power density, every, really everything on a brushless motor is going to be better. It also is going to have a much higher cost, even on the lowest levels of it. You know, let's, let's say on this, uh, this brush motor, we're talking about $20 for this particular motor and for a low end brushless motor, you know, you can probably get some straight from China for maybe 40 bucks or something like that, but it's going to be really, really, uh, low quality at that price. And for something that's a, you know, a decent starting quality, it generally is more like the $60 range. So, you know, three times the price or so, uh, I think for our own, it's going to be more than three times the price. Um, but you, you get essentially an infinite lifespan other than the bearings. Instead of having brushes to wear out, instead of having, you know, a 500 mile wear out period or less, you can go for thousands and thousands of miles on a brushless motor. And as long as the bearings don't get packed with mud or rust or something like that, then more than likely they're just going to keep wearing as long as it's, you know, quality bearings. Of course, there, there's a lot of variability in quality, just like everything else in the world. So... That's the difference between the two types. The rotor, here's a brushless rotor for the in-runner right here. It's just magnets that spin around. 
So I guess the final question would be, when would you choose each of these? Just to be simple, if you want to go lowest cost with good reliability, then the brushed motor in particular, something like our sport motor of a low cost combined with, uh, let's say the new ISDT ESCs, they're, they're like $25 for the ESC, or you can go to 1080 from Hobby Wing, those are like $40 for any ESC. You can get an entire combo for $60 or less for the, the low quality end, and it's gonna work just fine for crawling, absolutely 100% no problems. You're going to get great low speed control as long as your motor and your ESC support that. You're going to have plenty of torque density. Your runtime, it won't quite be as good as a brushless motor, but it's still going to be plenty for crawling because crawling doesn't ask for a whole lot. You would choose brushless if you either wanted higher performance, a higher torque density, uh, things like rock racing, you gotta have brushless. If you, if you want a rock race without constantly replacing your motor, burning it out on the hill, something like that, you gotta use brushless. But for crawling, brushless also works extremely well, especially these days, there's a lot more choices. There's a whole lot more choices on the market these days. Uh, so they're gonna be smooth. This Crawlmaster right here is a 10 pole end runner. It works sensorless with mm, pretty much any modern ESC, nice and smooth. Same guy for this revolver. It's gonna be nice and smooth sensorless. Uh, lower KVs for the outrunners, but eh, you know, pretty much anything for, for brushless. doesn't matter what you're doing for brushless, there's gonna be a motor for it. So if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, in some cases a lot more money to go for that higher quality, the brushless is gonna give you better runtime, better torque density, better efficiency. And if you're looking to build something that's like a ultra lightweight vehicle, you're gonna be able to get your lightest weight out of a brushless system, in particular, a really short Outrunner combined with a really small ESC, a micro-sized ESC or mini-sized ESC. The brushless is gonna get you there. Although the brushed is still, you know, you can still build pretty light with that. So as you can see, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. I tried to keep the tech heavy terms out of it. Let me know how I did on there. So if you do have any questions, leave them down below. Please leave them down below on this and that will give me a really good idea on what to do on a deep dive video for the next ones on motors. You know, you've seen them in the past from the channel, but this should at least explain the basics, brushless versus brushed and why we use one or the other. So as always, I do thank you for tuning in. Have a great day.